Scorsese, well, yeah. even Woody Allen, I discussed. There isn't one of them who wouldn't do this. Right. And did that, so Eric Levinson must have been influenced by this whole, he must have known. So that's, Wag the Dog is about this whole idea. Uh, I mean, that's why. The character did, was named Stanley. Right. And, and he gets killed at the end because he demands he credit. Killed at the end. Tell me about the making of it. So, was it difficult? I mean, <laughs> committing the greatest fraud, uh, what you want to call it. I'm not saying I it's a. Okay. Think I a lot about that. At the time. I know. So, I'm not making a moral judgment, but making this huge, ambitious, technical foe landing, was it part of the 2001? Was it very difficult? I mean, what was the experience like? Artistically, practically, emotionally, what was Nothing it like? Nothing was harder than 2001. So the, 2001 was harder than faking the moon landing. It actually was because you learned things on 2001 and yes, I mean it's, 2001 was very ambitious, and that's not to say that faking the moon landing was not ambitious, but uh, yeah, I learned things making 2001, which is why I got this gig in the first place, right? Right, right. That makes sense. So, so what was the? But it was, it was easy for me because. Um, well, first of all, I didn't think a whole lot about the morality of it. As I said, if I had, I might have been uh, more uh, hesitant, more stifled in my work, but I didn't. And I, I could see that, that Neil was, actually. He was bothered by it. More than Buzz Aldrin or anyone else involved. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. About in a way, everything was going to center around him. He was the one who was supposed to come down off the ladder and announce the, the step for mankind and what have you. Uh, he sensed that this was going to be a life-changing experience for him. And I mean on a major scale. Uh, actually, he was, uh, he was rather tortured by it the rest of his life. Really? I mean, is that why you think of interviews? Yes, and, that's, and, and, and in, in fact, uh, that actually began to affect my own perception of it, watching what what happened to him. Okay, in what way? Just seeing the deterioration of him? And, I mean, was he depressed? or? He was depressed. He was uh, drinking heavily, um, bitter, scared. Uh, just phobic, uh, avoiding people. Uh, and that guy Bart Sibrell or something tried to get him to swear in a Bible. I mean, I mean, what, when I say he affected me, that's why there was so much time in between films for me. Between uh, uh, you, Full Metal Jacket and well, between uh, uh, The Shining and Full Metal Jacket was about six years. Between Full Metal Jacket and Eyes Wide Shut is. 13 years, yeah. and a lot of that time was spent just... Like just emotionally processing? Yes, mm -hmm. it, it became very conflicting for me. I was proud of my work, but at the same time, and this was a lot, due to, a lot because of Neil's influence, not consciously, he didn't do this to me consciously, but I spent a lot of time with him, and each time I did, I became more and more bothered, troubled by my own participation in this. Okay. Well, what would he say? I mean, what, what was, did he explain the source of his depression? He I mean, was what? on the verge of tears. He did not cry. I won't say he cried, but he was on the verge of tears so many times because of what he did. I mean... What he participated in. It's almost as if he thought up the idea, you know? Right. He and felt he, that he was almost used, really. Okay. But he's the one who felt the guilt. I'm sure NASA did not feel that much guilt. And, I mean, why did he go up, I wonder? I wonder why they promised him a seat connect in three years when they figured it out. They kept lying about it being possible. So why do you think he did it? Why did Armstrong do it in the first place? He, he thought, they kept saying, we'll be ready in three years and you'll go then. Just lie now and we'll go in three years. The funding will keep going and we'll we'll figure this out and you'll go. Oh, well, actually. Right, yeah. And they, but they were lying, you know, and, that, and they figured it out. And he got really, you know, so cynical. Got it? So, uh, so why did Armstrong go? I mean, he's such a moral principled man. If he, why would he go on a fake moon mission? I don't believe that. Well, they strung him along because they led him to believe, oh, don't worry, we're going to have the money in a few years and we'll actually go and then you will go. They'll have, of course. you mean they'll have the technology in a few years? Yes. Okay. They will have enough, they will, yes, they will be able to uh, actually 
perform the miracle of going to the moon. And yes, he would be in the saddle. So in other words, okay, let's make this clear. Kennedy set a, a deadline, psychological deadline of the 60s. They knew they couldn't beat it. Right. So they, they could have. They, they did. Right. And if they did, you're saying they sincerely thought that they would really get there within a few years. I believe, yes, they did think so. Because that's what they, well, I mean, that's... Although some didn't. There was a, a difference of opinion. There were some that just believed honestly that we will never be able to get there. There's just no chance. That Werner and I used to like have coffee in the mornings, and he was like, that, you know, there, uh, "There's no fucking way." Like, you know, is it, like you know, even Werner von Braun. Right, 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 right. So go, you go with that. Some people didn't believe that you could go. Even, well, Werner or? von Braun, of course, didn't. Think Are, so. The director didn't think so. The man was just too brilliant. He knew that we couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, so, okay, I'm talking about a guy working for, on two lost causes, the Nazism and, 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 and you know, the, the, the quest for the moon. I mean, he really, did, and he didn't tell them? I mean, did he ever tell them? Did he tell NASA? Like, did he tell the president we can't go? I mean, I mean, he must have, he must have been broke the news. Well, he was very old, of course, at the time, and a lot of people just dismissed him. Younger, more ambitious people, some of them really thought we could get there. Right. Or wanted to believe it. Maybe on a conscious level they knew we couldn't, but they just wanted to believe the impossible because they were so full of themselves. And so full of the dream. Yes. The dream the dream was very powerful. And that's what beguiled Armstrong. Here the noble stand up guy and he didn't want to be part of the lie, but he he knew he'd get a seat if he played ball on when when they actually did go up. He was too good for this. But that day never came, obviously. That day never came. And what did that do to him? I mean, it gradually destroyed him, I think. Okay. He deteriorated. Um, yeah, like I said, he, he he drank a lot. He was full of self-recrimination, and so was I. Well, mainly from his influence. I, I almost it's like I I caught it okay. from him. And I'll tell a story about, uh, I talked to him one last time before his death, and he made me promise to get this news out. It was too great. It was, you know, just one last story. I, I died before he was dead. Okay. One last conversation that, it, that, that uh, right, the last conversation you had was about three months ago. And he said that, you know, uh, one of, you know, that he, he record, like, he's going to write a letter and, and put it in a drawer and maybe his wife someday will give it out. But he's like, or it's like you, you know, you're a media guy. You got to tell the truth one day, you know, right before, but he urged me to tell the truth. You know, he, you know, he couldn't because of reasons that, he, that because he was a government employee his whole life and he had a government pension. And here I am a millionaire. Like, you know, you, you can afford to Stanley tell the truth. You know, I still get a government pension, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and and that's been eating on you to do this, and that's why you're not doing it now. You're doing it 15 years from now, you got, or whenever. Like in other words, you're telling this. That's why you're not announcing on CNN. It's because you're going to honor his wish, but you're not ready for it now to come out. But this is you're doing this for me. Am I putting it off because I think I'll be because you don't want your family. You you want to be dead, right, right, right. and you don't want your family to have 15 years on it. Your wife will probably be dead, and your kid will be grown. Right. You want distance from your legacy from this truth. That's it. Okay. okay. Right, right. So, what happened? Um, so, so, so what? So, so, what really motivated contacting me as a filmmaker was I talked to Neil, and I was I really felt guilty, and that's why I arranged for you to interview me because I wanted to blah blah blah. blah. Let's talk about the motive. So, so wait, so so Neil really got to you. I mean, it sounds like he's the impetus of this entire confession in a way. I mean. It, it's your. It's like a theme. Like so, he really it made you become me. circumspect uh, about this. He even virtually begged me to um, reveal all this. He couldn't do it himself. He he has a pension to worry about. Uh, I had basically nothing to lose. I'm you know an established filmmaker, not involved with the government in any way except for this one job. And I, I made my, my millions. I'm, I'm really basically set for life. I'm almost 70. But you still must fear one thing they can do to you, which is, I mean, I don't know. Do you ever, I mean, you, they are, you obviously, do you ever worry about them killing you because of the secret? I mean, you have become a bit of a recluse. I don't know, the, you know, with the... Yeah, um, Garbo, Howard Hughes, J.D. Salinger, and me. 
Right. And to some degree, Neil. But did they, I mean, did any of them think that the government was out to get them? And I'm not saying you think that, but do you? I mean, the government obviously no. said they'll kill you. I mean, obviously, the government said we'll kill you if, if you say anything. I mean, that, that's a standard top secret sort of penalty. It's for, understood, even if it's not said. Right. But they did say it to you, I presume. Yeah. They, they, they did. I mean, the, yes, the government, they, yes, they, 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 they said basically, so it they was. They might be cute about it, but yeah, it was said in no uncertain terms. So why are you, so this won't, this can't this get you killed? Well, that's why I'm uh, delaying it. Okay, the 15 years thing. This is thing. not going to be seen. Okay, until for another 15 years 15 after you're dead. Well, no, that's if you die tomorrow. You're not going to die tomorrow, clearly. I'm sorry. Okay, try again, try again. Yeah, it's okay. This, so why do you, you could get killed by doing this? This could kill you. Why, why are you doing that? That's... Well, this is not going to be seen until oh, of our 15, 15, 15 years after my So death. now I, that's why you have to sign the NDA and all these. Okay. That's right. All right. Well, that makes sense now. Okay, I understand that now. All right. It should be known, but I want there to be some kind of cushion for my family. Uh, 15 years seems like a good no. Okay, all right. After my death, 15 years after my death. But, okay, so let's take a step back. You're making this tape out of an effect Neil had on you? I mean, Armstrong sort of influenced you? Pretty much. You? Um, sometimes it just takes a catalyst. I mean, you know, somewhere inside you, you know what's right. Right. I mean, I, I went for years just thinking I was doing the right thing, just just through my art. You know, and then something comes along that uh, you don't even recognize as a temptation because you're so swept away by your own ego. Uh, it took someone like Neil Armstrong and distance and time to hammer into me what this really meant about society, about myself, about the human condition, even, which is what I'm about. Uh, so you must feel yes. very proud and very, very, very guilty and proud of this thing. I mean, yes, conflicted. I mean, I still think it's a terrible. Maybe it's a terrible thing to say. Maybe not. But I look at that or even think of it. I just remember it, and I think this was my fucking masterpiece. Yeah. I still think so. Right. I mean, it's the greatest. My <laughs> flaws. It's my goddamn masterpiece. It's better than 2001. It's better than Paths of Glory or. Or uh, Clockwork Orange, or Barry Lyndon, or Doctor Strangelove, and, and, all of which I love. But and, and, and you're include, now that, that's the moon landing itself, and that's, and what a triumphal story that is. Uh, were you involved in any of the other missions at all, or is that just the one? I mean, would they just take your thing, or did it was it a one off, or did you get did you do them all? I mean, you just did eleven and thirteen. They brought you back after twelve failed. Okay, right. just to just to do thirteen. That's it. Um, and Neil helped you with that. So, so was it just a one-off? I mean, you just did. Did you do them all? Well, I did eleven and thirteen as well. You did thirteen, uh, okay. Not twelve. Why? Did, why is thirteen a failure then? Why did you? Well, they brought me back. And why? But why did you make after it? Twelve failed. You mean twelve failed? How? You? What do you mean? How did twelve fail? Tell me, till twelve failed. How did it? I'm, I'm asking you a character. How did twelve fail? Tim, can we stop? Nobody watched it. No one cared. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so you did eleven and thirteen. But why, why thirteen? Why did you make thirteen and do like a failure? Why did you? Because twelve was a disaster. I mean, we mean cared why anymore? Did it? Seventy-two. Uh, oh. By then, it was old hat almost. People just didn't care, and that's why they had to play golf up there. Okay, so I mean, as if golf was. Was the you know was watchable? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if they'd had a horse race, that would have been watchable. <laughs> That's true. But a, a golf match, I mean, a, a golf game on the moon. Right. Okay. So they weren't getting the ratings. That actually. wasn't my idea. I, okay. I, I will not take credit for that. Okay. So so it was really a ratings issue that if they had twelve didn't pull the the ratings that eleven did. And so why did you come up with thirteen storyline? Like what, how'd that happen?